Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. Hearthstone's Rise of Shadows expansion and the accompanying standard rotation, of course, clearly changed the meta game of standard format of Hearthstone. It's completely different now than it was one month ago. A large part of this has been because the expansions from 2018 have now been given a chance to shine, especially stuff like Boomsday Project. The mech synergies, all that stuff is really influential at the moment. In a way it could not really be when 2017 expansions were part of the format. But also Rise of Shadows itself has delivered some really solid cards that are centerpieces of their respective decks or that are enabling many various decks to succeed. And in this video I'm going to take a look at the 10 best cards from Rise of Shadows itself and what they have contributed to the metagame. Coming in at number 10, we have the Shaman Class Murloc, Underbelly Angler. A 2 mana 2 3 Murloc, after you play a Murloc, add a random Murloc to your hand. And this card is incredibly powerful. It's a refill all by itself. Well, it needs one more Murloc. But you top deck this sometime in the mid game, you play it, you play a cheap Murloc, you keep getting more Murlocs and keep playing them, and boom, that's an instant board. Murloc Shaman is a bubbling under archetype because it doesn't do that great against Rogue and it doesn't do that great against Warrior. But should either of those get nerfed at some point, Murloc Shaman is just there sneaking and waiting and Underbelly Angler is by far the best card in the deck. Actually in many of Murloc Shaman lists if you sort them on HS replay by drawn win rate, Underbelly Angler might be the only card with a more than 50% drone win rate in the entire list. And it just defines the whole archetype. At number 9 we have Archmage Vargot, the card that was given for free for everyone who had a Hearthstone account when the new expansion was launched. Archmage Vargot, 4 mana 2 6, at the end of your turn, cast a spell you cast this turn, targets are random. And Archmage Vargot has seen play in so many different decks. People are using it in stuff like Megatoon Warrior to double up a shield block. They're using it in stuff like Token Druid to double up some buffs for the tokens. People are using it in Mech Hunters to double up 9 lives. It's just an incredibly flexible card that sees a lot of play in multiple classes and not many cards can boast to do that. Well, of course, Ciliax can, but Ciliax is not from Rise of Shadows. At number 8, we have Mana Cyclone. 2 mana 2-2 two, two elemental. Battlecry, for each spell you've cast this turn, add a random mage spell to your hand. This has been a bit of a late bloomer. Decks that are using Mana Cyclone are just now appearing, after one month of the expansion already being out. But now it's getting to see a lot more play in mage decks, spell based mage decks, play a bunch of spells, play the zero cost spell that discounts your next elemental by two, making this one free, play this one, get your hand full of mage spells. I mean, what's there not to like? Very powerful card. There are even builds that are incorporating questing adventure into mage. And thanks to Mana Cyclone and the ability to just not run out of cards. At number 7 comes Blast Master Boom. 7 mana 7-7, seven, seven. Battlecry summon 2 one, one boom bots for each bomb in your opponent's deck. So obviously only usable in one archetype, warrior class card, so one warrior archetype, bomb warrior. That's the deck that can use this card, but this card is insanely strong in that deck. Just getting that board full of boom bots and hitting your opponent and then hitting your opponent again with those death rattles, it's just incredibly powerful. In the grand scheme of things, Blast Master Boom is overshadowed a little bit by Dr. Boom Mad Genius, its namesake from Boomstay Project, the hero card, which is possibly the strongest warrior card at the moment. But still, the power of Blast Master Boom, when it comes to Bomb Warrior, cannot be denied. At number 6, Archivist Elysiana. 8 mana 7 7 battle cry, discover 5 cards, replace your deck with 2 copies of each. The card that made control games go to the turn limit. And if that does not get you a spot in a top 10, making lots of games go to turn limit, even though the result might be terrible that the games are going to turn limit, then this is still nonetheless powerful. 
It's possible and I hope that this card is going to get nerfed somehow, but even if it does, you're going to get all your dust back should you craft it. And it cannot be nerfed indirectly, any nerf should come to Elysian directly, so it's a very safe craft in that sense. At number 5 we have Jeff Nomi, the centerpiece of the infamous Nomi Priest, a combo deck that just cycles, 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 and then Nomi, Seance, Nomi, Seance, Nomi, lots of Nomis, lots of boards of 6 6 Cs, and tries to win the game. And Nomi is more than that. Nomi can be used in other classes as a combo card too, and you can even put this in your rogue deck with some shadow steps and try to improve your warrior matchup. Just a very powerful, very flexible, neutral win condition. At number 4, the best, last, maybe not quite enough of a hope for Warlock, Arkvillain Rafarm. Arkvillain Rafarm replaces your hand and deck with legendary minions, an effect that we once upon a time had to really struggle with trying to get that golden monkey. But that is now a simple battle cry on a 7 mana minion. And Rafarm is the tool that Warlock 2 decks can use to try to contest Warrior. It really is the lifeline of those aggressive 2 decks. You know, world where sometimes they just need more value. It can also fit in slower Warlock decks, but slow Warlock decks are not doing very well right now. Nonetheless, of the success Warlock is able to find, Rafarm is responsible for a large portion of that. At number 3, we have my favorite card of the expansion to be honest, Conjurer's Calling. 3 mana, twin spell, destroy a minion, summon 2 minions of the same cost to replace it. This is an incredible value engine for mages, this has really affected the way mage decks are built. Putting in stuff like mountain giants, just so that you can Conjurer's Call your mountain giant, and that will give you either more mountain giants or it will give you grave horror, so it can give you big taunt minions as well. And this goes into minion based mage decks, this even goes into these more spell based mage decks because it's just so good. And it's a twin spell, you can do it twice. In a pinch you can even use it as a heart removal spell because you can play it on an opponent's minion. Sure the opponent is going to get two random minions of the same mana cost. But if you kill stuff that's like buffed or something then wow. That's just, just simply amazing card. If you were wondering where all the rogue cards are, with rogue being as popular as it is, well, Evil Miscreant, number 2. While Evil Miscreant is a 3 mana 1 5, so the stat line is pretty bad. At least the attack is 1 attack, so it doesn't really do much, but 5 health, so it's really difficult to get rid of it. And you get two lackeys when you combo this out. And because it has so much health, it's so difficult to kill, that means that you can bounce it, you can shadow step it, or you can use waggle pick to bounce it. And that gives you more lackeys, and really the power of lackeys has been incredible. I definitely undervalued lackeys before the expansion. Those one mana minions that have effects, they are just really, really good. And evil miscreant is the best way to make lots of them. Finally, at number 1, it's another rogue card, it's the Waggle pick. 4 mana 4 to Death Rattle, return a random friendly minion to your hand, it costs 2 less. Pip's Waggle pick is not that powerful all by itself, it's more like the combination. Waggle pick just arrived at a perfect time. It arrived at a time when there's preparation, there's raiding party and there's Dread Corsair, all in the meta at the same time. Which means that you can prep your raiding party, you can play your waggle pick, you can play a couple of zero mana tree tree taunts all at once and go face. And if you buff this, you can go face some more, and then if you can bounce your Leroy with this a few turns later, you can go face a lot more, and that's somehow how Rogue ended up killing people from hand, without really needing to have a board at any point. Individually, Wagglepick might not be the strongest card in the set, but the meta that it came into, the other support cards that are available around it, just made it have the largest effect on the meta of any card from Rise of Shadows. Many of the changes to the meta are of course the result of the standard rotation, other cards leaving the format, and we're seeing lots of 2018 cards getting more prominence. But as you can see from this top 10 list, the new Rise of Shadows cards also have a big part to play in shaping the Hearthstone metagame. Thank you for watching. 
If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.